Hey guys, in BC we are constantly breaking summer record high temperatures and I figured what better time than to show you how to do AC in your LS swap. Now this video is going to be about my Fox body and how it works in this car, but the good news is that this is pretty universal information and any AC setup is going to look pretty similar to this one. So we'll start under the hood with the compressor. So for the compressor on this car, I'm using the factory Ford compressor. And for a lot of LS guys, they'll use the Sandin compressor. There's a couple different varieties of it. And the good thing with the Sandin style compressor is they're pretty common. And it's probably the type of thing that you can find at a junkyard or a wrecker. So the compressor on mine is mounted using an ICT billet kit. And this kit is specifically designed to mount the stock Fox body compressor on the LS engine. Now they make a variety of different kits and you can even use like a factory GM compressor mount. Uh, it all depends on what your setup looks like under the hood. But a lot of the trucks, they run the compressor on the passenger side and kind of in the bottom corner there. So have a look at those. And if they fit your setup, they're the cheapest and easiest to get. All right, now we'll move over to the condenser. Now the condenser is the part of the AC system which rejects the heat. And as such, it's mounted at the front of the car, right in front of your radiator. Now, again, I'm using the factory Ford condenser, but whichever vehicle you may be doing this in, you're just going to want to take a look and see if you can find a factory condenser for it because it's going to fit the best. It's going to match up with your evaporator nicely, and it's probably going to work the best. Now, one critical thing with the condenser is that it has to stay cool, obviously, but I don't think people realize, and I never realized how hot these things actually get. So airflow is critical. So if you do want to run AC, you're going to have to run an electric fan. Now I've got an electric fan mounted on my radiator, which sucks air through the condenser and the radiator. And I've also got an electric fan mounted on the condenser. And the reason I did this was because I was just trying to keep the temps as cool as possible because the hotter the condenser gets, uh, the worse the AC is going to work. Now, I probably could have gone with a better quality electric fan. These are China fans and really they're not great. I'm not expecting them to last long, but I just wanted to get the car going. So that's why I've got those on here. All right, if we take a look in the car, this is gonna be one of the tougher parts, but you really need a factory AC box for your car. And the purpose for this is that it holds the evaporator. And this is the part of the AC system that absorbs the heat from the inside of your car. So essentially for this car, the evaporator was in the factory box, in the factory location. I did switch it. I put a new evaporator in and I would recommend that if you're doing this type of work on your vehicle. But the critical kind of holy grail, hardest item for you to find is probably going to be the factory AC slash heater box for your vehicle. Okay, now we'll run over under the hood again and we'll take a look at the pressure switch and the dryer. Every AC system is gonna have one of these dryers, some people call them accumulators, and these usually have the pressure switch in them. Now, the purpose of this pressure switch in the Ford application is it actually only monitors low pressure. And what that does is it doesn't allow the AC compressor to turn on if the pressure in the system is too low. So pretend you have a super hot day, you, your fan stops working and you lose a whole bunch of refrigerant, this switch, the purpose of it is to allow the AC compressor to not turn on because if you turn the compressor on without enough refrigerant in it, then it's going to damage the compressor. Okay, now we'll go over to one part that you're probably almost going to have to get custom made and that's the lines. So the lines connect the compressor to the evaporator and the condenser. So I went to a local shop and they made me custom lines and it was pretty reasonably priced. Now, there are kits available online where you may be able to make your own lines as well. So this is definitely a good option to look into depending on what setup you're running. I would highly recommend getting custom lines made from a local shop because the local shop is going to have a lot better knowledge about which fittings to use. And they're also going to be able to calculate how much refrigerant needs to go into the system, which is a critical measurement. So the last part of the AC is just the wiring and it may look a little bit confusing, but it's actually extremely straightforward and all you really need is one button for the AC. Now for the Ford factory setup, I'm just using obviously the AC dial on my heater controls and all that does is supplies 12 volt power to one wire. So this one wire now is doing three things. The first thing it does is it turns on the compressor. 
So the compressor itself has two wires going to it. One is a ground, one is the power. So it supplies that power. The second thing it does is turns on the electric fan. Now, I had to do a little bit of black magic here because my electric fans are also triggered elsewhere. So what I did is I used this to trigger, I used the 12 volt power from the AC button to trigger a relay and the relay switches a ground output and the ground output grounds on the fan. Now, the reason I did that is because most electric fans are wired with a uh, 12 volt accessory power trigger and a ground output from the ECU. So it is possible if you ran a separate fan relay, maybe you have two fans, you could use the 12 volt power, but I would say in most applications, you're gonna have to do what I did here, which is essentially triggering a relay, provide a ground output, which then triggers the fan. And that way you can run your ECU's fan input as well as your AC fan input into the same connector. Now the last thing wiring wise that has to happen here is the idle needs to bump up when the compressor goes on. This is called an IAC kick. The IAC is the idle air control. It essentially acts like opening your throttle body a little bit. So I've got this wire triggering another ground relay and that ground output goes to my input harness on the Holly, and the pin I chose is the one that does the IAC kick for me. So in the Holly software, I've played around with how much I want the idle to go up when I turn the AC on to get the car running smooth. And you hardly even feel the engine stutter now when the AC turns on with the kick working. Okay, now the last, last thing that you have to wire here is a way to turn off your AC compressor at full throttle. Now how you do this is you run your AC compressor power wire through the normally closed terminals on a relay. Now the Holly ECU provides a ground output which will shut off the AC compressor at full throttle, which goes to one side of the relay. Now you can see the other two sides are just connected here. So that's how that is done. And there is a lot of relays on this one wire, but I assure you this works. So as always guys, if you have any questions on how this setup works or how you can do AC in your specific vehicle, Feel free to leave a comment down below, shoot me a message on Instagram, and I really encourage you to, to dive into this one. It is not very hard to do, it just takes a little bit of reading. Thanks for checking out the video guys, and we will see you on the next one.